Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning from the British Virgin Islands. It's another beautiful day given unto us by the Lord and I will rejoice and be glad in it. It's really a beautiful day and today I just want to honor the Lord and just let him know how grateful I am for his breath <laughs> that he has given unto us another day. Uh, today is a gift. Yesterday is gone and you know we don't know what will happen tomorrow so let us give God thanks today for his goodness. Good morning, Sister Jacqueline. <laughs> Good morning. God bless you, sis. You know, uh, today, um, I, I just want to encourage somebody about this walk that we're on as people of God, as children of God. Good morning, Lindria. Good morning. God bless you. Yes, this walk that we're on as people of God. It's not easy at times. Uh, last night I posted a, a short, a short thing about being in the will of God. And some people sometimes wonder, what does that look like? What does being in the perfect will of God for your life look like? Some believe that it's a life of um, comfort. Some, some, some of us like to be comfortable I, I know about being comfortable and being in, in a comfort zone. And it, it feels good. The familiar feels good. Good morning, Mary. Welcome. You know, the familiar feels good. The, the things that you know and the areas that you operate in that you know that you know, it, it feels good. And if anything should disrupt that level of comfort, it can throw some people off. And today, I just want to encourage us from the Word of God that we should expect trouble. We should expect trials. We know this. We say it all the time, but when it happens, it still seems to take some by surprise. And that should not be. That should not be the case at all because we were forewarned. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Good morning, Felicia. Good morning, friends. It's really good to have you here this morning. You know, and if you have your Bibles and you can, just take a look at John chapter 16. John chapter 16. And even from the beginning, you know, Jesus was having this conversation with his disciples. Well, more like he was giving them a heads up of what was to come and he said look i am i am telling you these things basically so that you would not be surprised when they happen but in john chapter 16 one of the first things he mentioned in verse 2 is that they will put you out of the synagogues right they will put you out of the synagogues they are the, the disciples of christ were expected after he leaves to carry on with the work that he trained them to do and that he started. And Jesus made it clear that when you're doing this work for me, it's going to bring some trouble to your life. It's going to bring some trials, some hardships, some tribulations. But down to the end, he told them, you know, be of good courage. I have overcome the world. So I'm, I'm saying today that when you are serious about God, when you are serious about doing the work of God, don't expect to move through easily. There will be opposition. There will be fights. There will be just some situations that arise to try and stop you, to try and block you in some cases. And it's, it's not something that you should necessarily worry about. We, we, we humans love to worry, but when we place our trust and confidence in God, that should lessen or totally eliminate worry because we're, we're, not, we're not called upon to worry. 
we pray and we trust God and we believe him. We believe his word. So when someone decides to put you out of the synagogue, today we can say the churches, because you are standing up for Christ or you're standing up for righteousness and holiness and godliness. These are things that we, we don't hear a lot about. Again, the sermons nowadays are about money, money, prosperity, and there seems to be no balance. It's okay to talk about money. God created money. The Bible says money answereth all things. And we know the importance of money. But if that becomes the core message, then we're missing Jesus. We're missing the point. And when you have persons rise up with this as their core, and others would say, well, what about Christ? What about Jesus? Then people get upset and they want to put you out because they say you too holy. <laughs> you're too holy and you're holier than thou and we have, we have come into a culture now where it is so common to accuse persons who are living for God as holier than thou you know and it is really sad it is it is sad because holiness is not a standard right it is the standard the ho the only standard that God has for our lives, holiness. And if we don't bring our lives into alignment with that, then we're missing the mark. And anybody who is listening to me today, hear this very well. Do not be ashamed. Do not be afraid to go all out for God. Live for him. All right, live for him. It doesn't matter if they put you out of the synagogues, if they put you out of the churches. You live for Christ. You lift up the name of Jesus. Let them call you holy ruler and holier than thou and self-righteous. I know, I know that there are persons who are self-righteous. You know, it's like they, <laughs> they see themselves as the model of righteousness and everything else is just, you know, not up to par and not up to standard. I understand. I get it. But the majority of us are not foolish people. We understand what self-righteousness is. We understand when someone is truly being holier than thou. We also understand when we have a lot of hypocrisy going on where some will preach one thing and do another and if you stand up and say none of that then you're attacked then they're ready to put you out of the church then they're ready to call your names then they're ready to throw stones at you even from the pulpit i know exactly what i'm talking about a lot of the stuff that goes on at times in churches, if i truly believe <laughs> if christ was here he would weep at some of the things that comes from our pulpits. You know, a lot of mess, a lot of melee, a lot of gossip, a lot of people's business. Those are the kind of things that we're hearing in pulpits nowadays. Nothing about Christ. So when you find a good church to attend, and when I say good, I'm talking about one that preach the unadulterated word of God, you stay right there. It doesn't matter what problems arise. You will be fine because the word of God is being preached. All right? Don't worry about the other stuff. The Lord will take care of them because he has planted you in a place that he can water you and feed you and help you to grow in his knowledge and in his grace. All right. So anything that is contrary to that kind of lifestyle may not be accepted, even in the church. Good morning, Honorable Keynes. Good morning. Good morning, Leticia. You know, Kashina. Good morning. Good morning. Takara. Good morning. You know, I'm seeing you all. And I'm, I'm saying today, anytime you go against the grain, anytime you go against what's popular, expect trouble expect trials expect tribulations right jesus told his disciples in john chapter 16 that this is going to happen that is going to happen you know but the holy spirit will come and he will guide you into all truth right he will guide you 
into all truth. Now, the Holy Spirit, and I, I love the precious Holy Spirit because he's so intelligent. And I say it all the time that he doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't say one thing today and another thing tomorrow. Sometimes we hear persons would utter these prophetic words over people's lives. You shall be blessed and blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in, blessed coming out. And let you step on their toes tomorrow. They reverse the blessing. <laughs> Foolishness. Foolishness. We, we do so much things at times and believe that we're pleasing God and we're not. My God is not bipolar. He doesn't say one thing today and another thing tomorrow. And that is the problem we're having even today where we're hearing a lot of stuff going on. And the Lord is trying to speak to us. He's trying to warn us. He's trying to send messages our way. And then you have the, the, the true messengers of God who are speaking the heart and mind of God. And on, an, on another front, you have those who are speaking something else and confusing the people. And I'm saying, you know, where is God in all this? Because those who are for God are saying the same things. And the ones who are, you know, trying to distract and deceive are saying something else. And they're trying to move people away from the real issue. And that is not good. So when you start to speak up, for God and you're speaking out expect trouble I'm telling you the devil is not gonna roll over and play dead while you do the work of the Lord he's not but Jesus already warned us he warned his disciples and he warned us the Holy Spirit the, uh, the, the Bible says he will lead us into all truth and he will not speak of himself Right? He will tell us what's coming. That's in verse 13. Right? John 16, verse 13. He will tell us of things to come. And that's very significant because what I notice the Lord has been doing from ages, and it's, it's nothing new now, He writes the headlines long before they come out. And when you have your ears to God's mouth, and he speaks what's coming and he says, warn or tell or go and do, you better obey. Because what I'm seeing happening now is the Lord would whisper something in the ears of his messengers and say, tell it. And a day after, two days after, sometimes the very same day, later on that day, it comes to pass and it's in the headlines. And this is when somebody is in tune with the Holy Spirit because you're hearing from God not from familiar spirits not from the devil who has information right he has information but he doesn't have the truth that God said the Holy Spirit would lead us into all right now Jesus he did say at the end, he warned the disciples and he said, look here, there's going to come a time when you will even leave me and go to your own homes. You'll be scattered because, you know, a persecution was coming to Christ. He was about to be crucified and he knew that they would not, they would become afraid. But he was warning them that, look, even though you leave me, I'm not alone. I'm not alone. So he's saying that the comforter, the Holy Spirit, he would be with us after he left. And the Holy Spirit has been with us, right? So we don't have to worry. He has given us his peace. And in the last verse of chapter 16, he basically said, you know, in the world, you will have trouble. But, and I'm paraphrasing, cheer up. You know, I have overcome the world. So this is what I'm saying now. The trials, the troubles, and the tribulations that you're going through, you have already won. Don't worry about it. You have already won. Just stay on that path with Christ. Stay on the path with the Holy Spirit. Listen to him. Allow him to guide you into all truth. Allow him to tell you of things to come, to show you 
what's ahead, which is what has been happening. The Lord has been warning us of all the things that will be coming up upon the earth. It's there in Matthew 24, perilous times. And we're seeing that even today. We're seeing the actions. Things are moving. The earth is groaning. It's grumbling. It's shaking. It's happening. And it is not time for us to pretend or ignore the signs. Right? These volcanoes are erupting suddenly. Yes, volcanoes are active, like the one in Guatemala that erupted on Sunday, killing now the death toll stands the last time I saw it at 60-something. It may have increased by that. But th th even though it was an active volcano, the, the, the thing just, boom, it just exploded and killed several persons in its path who never even had a chance to run. Right? So... We have to get right. We have to get right. Those who are called by God to spread his message and his word in the earth, do it. Don't be fearful. Don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated. Don't look at their faces. Right? Don't look at faces. Just listen to God and do what he says to do. You will not regret it. Nobody's blood will be on your hands. You warn the people and you tell them, thus saith the Lord. Because a lot of times, persons are very skeptical. And that's fine. You, you, you will always have skeptics. You will even have mockers, those who just mock everything. Right? They just say, you know, all of this is just <laughs> a load of foolishness. Really? Let me tell you something about warnings that I'm learning and it, it's, it's becoming clearer to me. While the Bible mentions in Matthew 24 of things to come on the earth, woesome things, terrible things, earthquakes in diverse places, pestilences, we're seeing them, the storms, the hurricanes, the volcanoes, you name it, all of that. There are times when the Lord will give someone or some people specific instructions for a specific region for a specific time. It happened in the BVI. It did. For many, many years, the BVI never had a, a hurricane, at, at least nothing as destructive as what went on last year. And just before, remember now, you know, several years, nothing, quiet, blessings, prosperity, abundance. And I continue to say some still wondering where their prosperity and abundance is, but, you know, <laughs> the Lord knows. What I'm saying we were at a good place, I would say, in terms of, you know, the, 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 the country was at a particular level. And then the Lord sent some messengers from all over, locally, from overseas, to say, BVI, be on alert. Watch out. This year is not going to be like the other years. This year, that was 2017, was not going to be like the other years. And we all see what took place. I, I don't need to rehash any of that. More than to say, we must obey God. We must bring his word. There will be trouble. That's what I'm talking about today. There will be trouble. There will be criticism. Right? Some of the criticism and the mockery and the trouble comes from brethren. Remember David said, you know, if it was an enemy that bothered him he would understand but it was his friend so these attacks are going to come from places that you least expect it's those closest to you those around you those who laugh and eat and drink with you and then they turn around and say hmm, look at him look at her wanna be prophet <laughs> that's how mean people are and they laugh and they mock and they make a joke and they screenshot your, your messages and your warnings and they send them all over. And they make a mockery and they laugh and they sit back and say, aha, you know, look at this foolishness. And then suddenly disaster strikes. Who gets the last laugh, right? So we have to be careful about the way we treat warnings and the messengers of God. The Lord is watching. He's seeing everything. 
He's seeing it all. And he's saying, you know, when we say peace, then comes sudden destruction. And I'm including all of this in this message today so that we can be aware those who are called to warn, those who are called to minister. Because remember, God is loving. He's kind. He's merciful, rich in mercy. I'm telling you, God is rich in mercy because if he was like man, okay, you finish it. You fill in the blanks. You, you don't know what would happen because man... We don't forgive. <laughs> we, we, we don't forget. And we, we are ready for, to, to exact judgment, you know, on, on whoever messes with us. And we have been transgressing against God for years. And he has forgiven us time and time again. He has given us time and space to repent. He has given us time to fix up, to make things right. And still some will not heed and the Lord is saying, even today, as I'm speaking, that when we say peace, then comes sudden destruction. Let's be careful. Let's be careful how we treat the messages of God, the warnings and his messengers. Personally, I'm not too worried about certain things because I know who I am in God. I really am. He has built me up over the years. He has made me into a bold person. There, I guess it was always there, but he has made me bold. So some of the things that have people crying, I don't cry over foolishness. If people criticize and talk and chat, I, I just don't care. I really don't. I, I say to the Lord, is it that I'm not compassionate enough? Why is it these things don't bother me the way they used to? And he's simply saying to me, I'm building you because I have work for you to do. He doesn't want any wimps. The kind of situation that comes up at times on some of the Lord's messengers, you have to be strong. And he makes you strong. He's the one that backs you up. Right? He gives you that boldness and that courage because it's important work that must be done. Cannot be afraid of every little bush that, you know, rustled. And every bush you see move, you're afraid, you run, you're gone. If you're serious about God, if you're serious about working for him, your back has to be broad. Your, your, your skin has to be thick. You have to let some things just roll off. You hear them and you just ignore them. Sometimes, you know, they say things to see your reaction. And you just shake your head and move on. Because you know who you are in God. You know who you are. You know that trouble will not last always. Because Christ told us in John 16, 33, that he has overcome the world. If our God has overcome the world, what are we fretting about? What are we worried about? Criticism, it will come. Mockery, it will come. Blockages, people blocking you because they think they have something you need and they're trying to get at you. Stay with God. Vindictiveness, let me tell you, when people's vindictiveness comes up against God's vindication, there is no match. There is no match. So I'm really driving it home to somebody this morning to stand firm, stand strong, even if they put you out of the churches, even if they put you out of the synagogues. You keep on doing what God says. He has overcome the world. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't worry. It's okay to call on somebody, you know, to help build your strength. If you, if you feel... A little down it's okay it's okay to call upon the brethren to pray with you and to strengthen you and that's all good but don't back down don't retreat no surrender stand up face the situations square your shoulders and just know that God is with you he's fighting for you and not against you he knows the plans that he has for you all right, so I believe that's it for this morning. Just to let somebody know that in this life, you will have trouble. But do not let that trouble keep you back or stop you from fulfilling God's purpose and plan for your life. 
there are a lot of people out there waiting on what's on the inside of you. You go forward in faith. You go forward in God, knowing that the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, is with you. He's by your side. He's your paraclete. He has come alongside to help you, to strengthen you. And he will never leave you nor forsake you. It doesn't matter how dark the hour gets. The Lord is there. Fret not. Fret not thyself, even over evildoers. They will wither away like grass. Okay? Fret not. God is for you. All right. So this morning, I want to pray for us. Just pray for us and ask the Lord to strengthen us in the inner man. Strengthen our walk with him. We need to be strengthened because sometimes the, the, the situations are great and for some people it's overwhelming. So I'm not knocking persons who feel, you know, that they feel a little down at times. No, I'm just saying stand strong. Stand strong. Just, just know that God is there. So even in your weakest hour, remember, he said, his strength is made perfect in your weakness, in our weakness. We are not strong on our own. I get it. It is the Lord whose strength we are relying on. So let's pray. Lord, I thank you this morning for your, your word to us. I thank you, Lord, that every day that we wake up, you have given us a new opportunity to learn of you and to draw closer to you. Lord, there are some who are watching this morning and they are listening and they just want to be strengthened in their walk with you so that they can obey you without any kind of fear. They want to be able to rise up and do those things that you have commissioned them to do. So today, Lord, I ask you to endue them with your power and do them with your Holy Ghost because that's from whence our power comes, Lord. So help us, help them, Lord, to have an encounter with you that totally transforms their lives and turn them into another man. Just like you even did with Saul, Lord. You turned him into another man. So, Lord, I thank you today that you're doing something new in the lives of your people. You're causing those who are in the background to be thrust into the forefront and you have given them an assignment, and that assignment is to speak your words. That assignment is to obey you, no matter what. So, Lord, I ask you to give boldness, bring boldness. Make your people bold as a lion so that they can go forth and do that which you have commissioned them to do. You have not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind, Lord. I speak to people's minds right now. I speak to their minds that they will hear you, hear your word and your voice and your voice only, especially in times when they feel low, when they feel a bit vulnerable. Do not let the enemy touch them or infiltrate their minds, mighty God, as they give it over to you. Everything that they think about, Lord, let it line up with your word. Help them not to accept any negativity from any place, Lord, especially after you have already given them your word. So help us, O oh God, to be obedient. Help us to hear you and help us to do that which you say to do without fear, without favor. Lord, I thank you today. I thank you for blessing each person here this morning. You see them. You see them, Lord. You see their names. You know exactly what they need at this time. And Lord, I pray that you will grant it unto them. You will grant them your favor. You will grant them your peace. Those who are experiencing turmoils and troubles and trials and tribulations right now, Lord, help them to understand that after this, they will be strong. After this, you will get the glory. After this, and you know what their this is, Lord, they will have a testimony. So, Lord, I bless your name today because you are good, you are great, awesome, wonderful is your name. Lord, there is none like you. 
So I thank you today that even as persons go on out to their work or to their job or to whichever place that you have called them to today, that you will take them there, Lord, safely, in safety. There will be no accidents, no incidents, no negative reports because you, O oh God, are our shield. You have us covered and no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against us in judgment shall be condemned. So Lord, we believe your word. We're holding on to it and we're saying thanks in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. So friends, thank you for joining today. Thank you. You know, Kelly, Kelly J. Cook. Good morning. Black Queen, Vantapool, good morning. You know, all my friends from all over, thank you for joining from this little part of the world. I know some of you are from all over. I was uh, having a little interaction with a, a lady by the name of Cheryl, Cheryl Roos, this morning, and she was speaking Dutch <laughs> on um, a post that I did. And you know, technology is such that persons can come in from all over the world. And I'm happy to be showing a little part of our BVI, of the British Virgin Islands, where the Lord, you know, dwells. He, he loves us. He loves this place. And all he's asking is that we serve him as the God who he is. King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Good morning, Alyssa. Morning, Charlene, Shernet. God bless you all. Vivian, good morning. And just a reminder, uh, would you believe, well, not, it's not surprising because people are signing up every day, but after, you know, letting people know about this cruise that we're doing in December, we got some sign-ups yesterday, you know, deposit and all. And God is good. Uh, just to let those who do not know that... Um, my husband and I, we are, you know, uh, we have organized a cruise in December uh, from the 16th to the 22nd from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, visiting two places in the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos Islands and the Dominican Republic. And it's not just a cruise. We'll also have a one day seminar on board entitled Kingdom Empowerment. And the speakers are Pastors Will and Jacqueline Richardson. They are people from this part, you know, from the Virgin Islands, and they're now in, residing in Georgia. And they will be our speakers, very powerful people of God. Um, and I know that it's going to be a very interesting experience. I know some of my friends who have been on cruises before, you know, have already signed up and so on. But I promise you that this is going to be different. It's going to be spectacular. So if you are interested, you can inbox me or send me some sort of message. My number uh, is 1-284-340-1698. If you want to send me a WhatsApp message, some persons have contacted me by WhatsApp. And if you could just send an inbox and I'll send you more details. And the rates are very good. That's all I'll say. <laughs> the rates are very good. The final payment is the 25th of September. So if you come in now, you would have some time to just make uh, payments in between. All right. Rates start at just $650 per person. And you know, with a cruise, that's all inclusive, basically. Your, your food, your um, accommodation, your activities, you pay extra for, you know, shore excursions and stuff like that. But I'd be more than happy to give you all the details uh, once you indicate that you're interested. All right. So that's December 16th to the 22nd from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. A uh, wonderful cruise, time of kingdom empowerment, rest, relaxation, all of that will take place. All right. We will not have anything on the days when the ship goes to the port. So you're free to have a, a good time. Um, I am organizing uh, a, a day when we will do an excursion together for those who are interested. So we will decide if we're going to do that um, at one of the ports, which one it will be when we go together. The others, you you know, people will be free. Just you're on your own. You enjoy and take lots of pictures and just have a restful time in the Lord. All right. Just had to put that there. So God bless you today. And remember now that you are an overcomer because Christ has overcome the world. 
right? John 16, verse 33. God bless you. Take care.